Richard from La Brewing. Today we're going to look at the various presses that we have available to us. This particular video we're looking at the spindle press. We'll cover the other type of presses on later videos. But this is the spindle press. We get the spindle press from Italy traditional company that's been in business for well over a hundred years. They've been making this press for people in, in the main who have been making uh, wine from grape juice. And we've obviously adapted it to be able to press all sorts of fruit other than just grapes. But it is very much the traditional wine press that they've used over the years. We use a company called Bezo Fratelli who've been going for, as I say, many, many years. They are a really nice company family orientated, uh, passed down through generations and the skills and knowledge of making these presses and the equipment they use again has been passed down through. So if we actually look at the press and we look at some of the benefits that we've got with this particular press so that you can make a decision as to whether it's the sort of thing that you're wanting to need. If we look firstly at the base, the base is a pressed base. So if you imagine we get a sheet of steel and we're going to press the shape out of the sheet of steel. The advantage we've got with the pressing, unlike other ones which are made out of cast, is that if you get a, a, an object that hits it quite hard, the cast base would break, whereas this you would just put a dint in it. That's the first benefit that we like of, of this particular press. Secondly, in the feet we have holes drilled so that you can put a screw through and you'll be able to put the press into a permanent position. So if you're doing a lot of pressing and you're doing it in the same place and you've got a worktop that you can actually attach it to, screw it on. It makes pressing so much easier because your press won't move as you start tightening it up. We also love the, the way the basket is formed. We've got a basket here which has got two um, uh, locking pins in position on both sides. So if I just wheel this round to the other side and we take out all four of the locking pins, the basket, as you can see, comes to bits. It's into two halves. While I've actually got the basket here, let me just put these down for one second. While I've got the basket here, the wood that we're using is uh, a beech and we evaporate all the water out of it, press it so it's really, really hard. And this does obviously the work of squeezing the juice out. It's then held together with a band which has stainless steel, stainless steel bolts going through. At some stage in the future, if you ever want to replace these then obviously that is a facility that we have with this particular press. So I'll just put that back together and then we can look at the other bits on the press. When cleaning, we like to use uh, a little power hose or something like that. And if you take the basket to bits, then obviously it makes life a lot easier from a cleaning perspective. If we actually look at the functionality of the press, we have here a stainless steel spindle. Now this is the thing that's going to come into contact with the fruit. So it's really important that we're using stainless. If it was iron, then obviously we'd get uh, corrosion and all sorts of problems. With this particular um, stainless press, uh, stainless spindle, we'd recommend that you just grease that with some Vaseline. Vaseline's food grade, it keeps it nice and uh, uh, clean then, and will allow you to uh, make sure that this ratchet mechanism goes up and down quite easily. Let's imagine then we've got a load of apples or we've got a load of grapes, and we're gonna have those inside the press with two options. We can either put them in as they are, or alternatively, we can use a straining bag, something like this, where we can actually put the fruit in the straining bag, and then we can push the straining bag and the fruit around the spindle so it's nicely spread out. We then fold the top in. Once we've done that, we then place these two half circle blocks on top of the fruit. So these will go in and they'll drop down onto the fruit that we've got in here. 
Now we need to make sure that this particular basket is as full as possible because it's going to make life a lot easier for us. If we're only half full, we're going to have a bit of a problem. So we like to fill this particular basket with fruit and as I say, the two options, either the straining bag or just loosely pressed. So the blocks then go into position on there. Oh, excuse me. The blocks go into position on there and we've then got six more oak blocks which can go into place. Now these oak blocks will then sit on top. I'm going to do it here because then you can see what I'm actually doing. So we're going to put those blocks into place there and we're going to put that one there, that one there and that one there. And they're now in position. Now hopefully this whole arrangement is now going to be sitting above the top of this press because as the ratchet mechanism screws down and tightens up onto these wooden blocks the juice will then start coming out through these gaps in the side and pouring through the little funnel here into our collecting chamber. We need to look at this ratchet mechanism here. This is a really super piece of engineering. We've got in place um, a ratchet here which we use these two stainless steel blocks or pins and they go into position there and there. And underneath here we have a separate chamber, this one here. We'll take some photos of this so that you can actually see what's happening. So we've got some, uh, in this here, we've got holes in it and these pins move onto the holes. So as we tighten it up, this ratchet mechanism moves backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. And we've got obviously the T-piece, or the pin, that goes in place there that allows us to tighten it up. So as we tighten up onto these blocks, it's the ratchet mechanism which is moving and it's sliding obviously on the top of these blocks. What you don't want on presses is to have a fixed piece of pressing here because it would just cause you an absolute nightmare. And the cheaper presses offer you that as a standard option. This mechanism here allows you to be able to tighten it when you get up to friction. Imagine you've got loads of fruit in here. This is all pressing down on the fruit and this is sitting on top of here. So as you tighten it and tighten it and tighten it, it's getting harder and harder to press or to squeeze the juice out of that fruit. So this ratchet mechanism allows you the flexibility of being able to do that. And you can turn by little small fractions. You're not having to do a full turn. Little forward, little back, little forward, little back, little forward, little back. And it does make life so much easier. And a lot of the cost of this particular press is in this mechanism. And don't forget, all our presses from Bezo come with a five-year guarantee. So I think that says a lot about the quality of this spindle press. Not really a lot more that I need to say about the spindle press, um, other than to say, it is the most traditional. We can get the most leverage on our fruit. So if we're looking to squeeze out the last little bit, we can get more leverage from a spindle press than we would from a traditional crossbeam press because we can get some real strength on it. That's one of the reasons why it's also really beneficial to try and screw the press into position. Um, We've covered the sizes, we start at 5 and we go up to 45. The thing that I always say to everybody when they're buying a press is go for a size bigger than you think you're going to need. Because it's amazing how many times you use your press and you go, God, I wish I'd bought something bigger. Because don't forget, 30% of the capacity of the press will come out in juice. So we fill this with 11 litres, we're going to get 30% juice out of it. So we're going to get three and a bit litres every time we do a pressing. Now, if you've got a bigger press, then you've got more flexibility to get more out. <laughs>